Today we'd like to introduce you to a new feature inside our extremely popular and very unique Kipware Sketchpad. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Sketchpad, just to give you a brief outline, is the Sketchpad is our companion application that comes with our Kipware conversational software. And what this allows you to do is to import DXF files or to draw directly within the Sketchpad so that you can create shapes for non-standard type shapes. So the conversational software will quickly and easily create G-code programs for standard shapes and the Sketchpad will allow you to create G-code programs for non-standard shapes. Our newest release is called the Cycle Mode and it's available uh, working alongside the Machinist Mode uh, inside the Sketchpad. Uh, it's available for both milling and turning as well as our wire EDM conversational software, uh, but I think it's best illustrated in a turning application, uh, so I'm going to use uh, this part that we have on the screen. You can see this is the uh, OD of the part, face of the part, this is the center line, and we have a hole going through the part, and this is the contour that we want to create the uh, roughing and finishing program for. Uh, so here's our stock, uh, we're going to remove all this stock, and we're going to use the machinist mode uh, to be able to do the roughing of the part. Now the machinist mode is for uh, controls that don't have a can cycle. Uh, when we designed Kipware originally, uh, our idea was to make best programming practice. And best programming practice for a shape, uh, to do any roughing really, is to use a can cycle. Because the can cycle is very powerful in the machine, if you need to make any changes like uh, depth of cut, or if you want to leave more or less material for finish, it's just a simple parameter change on the line of the can cycle. So can cycles are the best programming practice to do any kind of roughing. But for machines who are less powerful, uh, let's say something like Mach 3, that doesn't have the can cycle capability, we have the machinist mode inside the sketchpad to be able to create a, what we call the longhand G-code program to do the roughing. And that's what we're going to do here. If you needed to do a can cycle mode, it's strictly a, a case of uh, selecting the starting element, which as you can see I'm scrolling through the box, this would be my starting element. I would select uh, the go icon for the start element, and then select the finish element, select this as my end point, and then just pull up the turning menu, fill in the blanks, and the software will automatically create a can cycle to be able to do this shape. And again, for machines that don't have the can cycle, those are the ones we're going to use the new feature called the cycle mode inside the machinist mode. So the first thing we'll look at as far as the Kipware machinist mode goes is the tool library. And this is a tool library that I can create uh, any type of tool. So you can see this is a 1875N mill, basically just a round, round tool. Uh, but I can create grooving tools or turning tools for turning applications. And I have a 55 degree ID tool that I've created uh, by basically telling it the width and the angle of the insert. When I select that tool and I turn on the machinist mode, you can see that the mouse becomes the tool. So every place that I double click my mouse, the software will record that position and whether it's R, uh, blue for rapid, or F, red for feed, the software will automatically record the position and the type of motion that I've created by basically just double clicking the mouse. Uh, so let's take you through uh, an example here and show you how it works and we're going to turn on the cycle mode and we're going to give it a depth of cut of 100 thousandths. Basically when we turn on the cycle mode, what that means is that every time I use the arrow keys up, down, left or right, the software will make the tool move by the depth of cut. And so let's do some roughing inside this part and I'll kind of show you what I mean. So first thing I want to do is wrap it the tool to here. Then I want to wrap it the tool to closer to the part. Then I want to wrap it the tool to the hole so that I can get a depth of cut first. So I want to get the uh, what the hole diameter is first. Now there's a couple of modes that we can look at and we can look at them through here. A horizontal mode, vertical mode. This means that wherever I double click the mouse if I'm in horizontal mode, it's always going to be a horizontal move from where the last position was to wherever I click the mouse. A vertical mode, same thing, vertical, vertical uh, move. 
Uh, zero or O would be a freehand move, which means anywhere I click the mouse, it doesn't have to be horizontal or vertical. I can just, uh, for instance, this particular move right here was a freehand move. I can toggle the cycle mode on and off with the C. And again, R rapid, F feed, and T. I can toggle the tool uh, image illustration on and off. So this is just a quick little uh, handy command list that you can pull up by just clicking the uh, icon for the question mark. So I'm going to use uh, vertical mode and what I'm going to do is I am going to turn on V so you can see I have vertical mode and rapid and I'm just going to hit the, uh, as close as I can to the hole and now you can see that I have a vertical line that came up uh, here. So now I'm going to use horizontal mode and I'm going to get a little bit closer to the part and now I'm going to start to create a, a toolpath. So I'm going to go vertical mode and I'm going to go the arrow key up which will give me my 100,000 step the cut. I'm going to change to feed in horizontal mode and I'm going to position the tool where I want my depth of cut to go. So you can see now that we have a rapid moves and then a feed move to the part. I'm going to back off the part by hitting the down arrow key so now I have a depth of cut back away of the part. I'm going to go back to rapid and now horizontal mode again to the front of the part. And then I'm going to go, let me just toggle the tools off so we can see what's happening. And now I'm going to go down, which would be my last depth of cut, and up again, which would be my next depth of cut. Change to feed, position the tool, back away, change to rapid, front of the part, two depths of cut, back to feed, back away, back to rapid, and you can see that I don't have to be, because I'm using the horizontal mode, as long as I position my tool, it's always going to be a horizontal line. Then if I come up, my two depths of cut, change to feed, position my tool, rapid, front of the part, feed. So now I'm getting ready, I want to take uh, some kind of a semi-finished cut, get a little bit closer to the part. So I'm in vertical mode and I'm going to position the tool close to my ID. So here's my rapid move. Let's get rid of some of these tools. And now I'm going to feed myself around the part. So I'm going to go feed in horizontal mode to the corner. I'm going to go vertical mode to the start of the radius. Then I'm going to go to freehand mode and I'm going to come around the radius. I'm going to go to horizontal mode. Back to freehand mode around the radius. Let me go to vertical mode off the part. I'm going to switch to rapid in horizontal mode to the front of the part and then back to freehand mode to end the cut. If I look at all my toolpaths, you can see that we have all the rapids out in here and all the feed moves that came around the part. So now I'm ready to create my G-Code program. So once I'm finished with all my toolpaths by using the mouse or the keyboard, I press G-Code. I have a conversational screen here that I can put in some information, let's say a tool one, let's say 650 surface feet and an approach point so before it picks up my moves where do I want the tool to go and I'm going to go to a diameter of say uh, 2 inches and a rapid approach point of Z1 inch. I'm going to give it my feed, ro feed rate and my program number and then I'm going to create program and here's my G-code program so GOO, GO1, all the moves that I created with the mouse have been created in a G-code program. If I save this G-code program and then pull up my Kipware TP application, Kipware TP is our toolpath plotting application that again comes with the conversational and the sketchpad. So I have my program loaded in the toolbox. I'm going to go and uh, turn my tool motion on. I'm going to select a tool from my tool library. select my 
ID boring bar. And then I'm going to plot the toolpath. So if we blow this up a little bit, you can see it a little bit better. If I go single block through TP, my rapid moves close to the part and then feed, feed, just like we created in the sketchpad, my G-code program being plotted to the screen is my semi-finished cut around the part and back to the beginning. So very easy to create the G-code program using the machinist mode. So that's a roughing toolpath. For a finishing toolpath, we're going to use the features that are available inside the sketchpad directly. And uh, this is because we're not relying on a can cycle. We're going to use uh, the longhand G-code program to create the finished contour. Very easy in the sketchpad. All I need to do is uh, pick my starting element, uh, which is going to be this element here. I want to start in this direction. So my tool is going to start here. And what I'm doing is I'm describing the finished contour. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to tell it that I want to end here at this particular element. And we could end at any element along the contour, but I want to do the whole contour. I'll pull up a conversational menu, give it some inputs. So I want to select that I'm doing the ID, uh, that I just want to do finishing. I want to cut along the z-axis. I want to turn on my cutter compensation and hit Create Program. And you can see now we have the longhand G-code program to finish the part. So very easy with the machinist mode to create the roughing toolpath and the sketchpad to create the finishing toolpath. Now if you have a machine that has a can cycle, again this is very easy to do in the sketchpad. We do the same thing. Select the start point, select the end point, pull up the conversational menu, tell it that I want to do roughing, and hit the create program. Now you can see I have a can cycle output to be able to rough that shape. So what I did in the machinist mode because uh, the machine didn't have a can cycle, very easy to do for a machine that does have a can cycle. If I want to do both operations, uh, basically just tell it that I want to do both operations, hit create program, and now I have a tool that does my roughing operation through my can cycle and my finishing operation uh, through my longhand g-code. One of the good things about the machinist mode is it gives the user, even though your machine may have a can cycle, gives you more power and more control over the type of toolpath that you can create. Uh, so let's say you have some kind of a groove that you want to do, and uh, the standard grooving motion uh, isn't sufficient to be able to cut the groove. It's very easy to do it inside the sketch pad uh, by using the new cycle mode, uh, by using the keystrokes, up and down arrow keys, and double clicking the mouse. So the machinist mode is a great way for you to create the toolpath that you want to create uh, rather than going through something that might be a little bit more standard uh, type of a toolpath. And again, that's everything I showed you is standard inside the Kipware Sketchpad. And the Sketchpad is a standard application that comes with all Kipware conversational titles.